What's up, everybody? We are bringing you a flashback Friday on the heels of this Filipino craze that Easter Sunday is bringing. We hope you're still going out to support it on the big screen. But we did not want you to forget there are another two really great movies out there that you can stream if you're uh, hungry for more Filipino. Uh, we have <laughs> B- Bitter Melon by our really good friend H.P. Mendoza, who is from the Bay. Uh, it's streaming on Amazon and Canopy. And you can also watch the fabulous Filipino Brothers, uh, which is written and directed and starred by uh, Dante Bosco, Rufio, if you will. And you can watch that on Hulu. Before you do that, we want you to listen to our flashback with H.P. Mendoza. And we hope you enjoy all these movies. Keep supporting Easter Sunday out on the big screen and watch Bitter Melon and the fabulous Filipino Brothers on streaming. And uh, we got to go get some Hello Hello. Peace. Welcome to Big Shock Boost Interviews, straight from the heart of quarantine. This is Erin. That's Ange. Hi. That's Sharp. Hello. You can find us at BigShockPodcast.com. It's a brand spanking new website. You can also sign up there for our monthly e-newsletters, so please do that. Um, we have some really fun content and exclusive content that we're offering you guys through that e-news, so do it. You can also find us every Monday morning from 6 to 6.30 a.m. at BFF.fm. Boy, yo, 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 inga. I'm really excited to have a friend of the show, H.P. Mendoza. He's a local San Franciscan, but also a director, also social media content producer. He kind of uh, won the internet at the beginning of Shelter in Place with his very funny Zoom parody. And spot on. Yeah, spot, spot on. 100% spot on <laughs> Zoom parody video that um, landed on Good Morning America. So this is our just kind of catch up interview with HP Mendoza. We hope you enjoy. It's been a minute since you've actually been on the podcast. I know the last time, if, if I'm wrong, but I think the last time we actually saw you was that Q&A for Bitter Melon over in Oakland. Was that, that the last time we saw you? That might have been the, yes, that and was that the last was 20, time. That was 2018. 2018, yeah. yeah. Also, but we also saw you at, was it a cam after party for their opening night? Remember at the Asian Museum? But that was 2018. Asian, was that the but same that was year? Before. That was the same year. Oh, that yeah. was before that? that wow. Was before. I'm also trying to think about there was the Mission Arcade, but then but that, that was... that was before. No, yeah, that was 20... So, yeah. so the last time we had you on, it was episode 166. I looked it up. And we're at like 450-something right now. Wow. <laughs> so that's how long ago it was. It was before Bitter Melon. It was before... Yeah. We were talking about Moonlight. Like, do you think oh, it's going to win? We were you know talking what? About, like, that's when it was. See, I, time. I know. I, I, yeah, right. I, I'm like, oh, yeah, that was just like last year, but I spent the whole year in Tokyo, so it couldn't have been. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so welcome back to the show. It's only been a few years. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and um, it, it's such a pleasure to have you back on. And yeah, let's start with Tokyo. Yes. Because you just, you moved. I did. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it was pretty crazy because um, I had just moved my mom back to her village in Pangasinan in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it was just a, it was a crazy time because, uh, you know, a lot of the stuff that was uh, portrayed in bitter melon started to kind of come to a head, you know? And Mm -hmm. my, my mom was like, wow, your brother is so crazy. I need, I need a way. I'm like, you know what? You need to be at peace. I'm going to help you retire. I'm going to help you. You want to go back to the Philippines? Let's do it. And um, yeah, left uh, left the Bay Area. She's been here for 50 years and she went back to the Philippines. But as soon as I left, she had this like separation anxiety, you know, um, and it wasn't, you know, it wasn't just me. It was also, you know, America. She was used to uh, the American lifestyle mm-hmm. there. She was living in a province. Mm-hmm. And um, I came back here and I was like, oh, and I told my husband, Mark, I'm like, well, I wish it was as easy for me to visit her every month as it was when she was in Colma, you know, mm-hmm. it was easy for me to go to, uh, to Colma from the mission. And uh, Mark was like, well, uh, an opportunity came up for us to go to Tokyo. And this is through IDEO, the company that he works for, that I contract for. And uh, I was like, let's just do it. And we totally just like jumped 
jumped at the chance and we left here like post haste and um yeah i was in tokyo going back and forth between tokyo and the philippines and working on several scripts and several uh, gigs and everything was great like we were planning for may and on to be about traveling around asia and exploring more of japan um especially since i you know gotten better at speaking japanese mark got better at writing and reading japanese let's make use of that and the company was like, hey, so um, HP's visa renewal seems to be conflicting with something. And we're like, okay, what is this thing? And they're like, well, we predict the lockdown will happen at the, on the same week. Oh, and wow. I was like, okay, so, um, okay, well, it wouldn't be so bad if we're stuck in Tokyo, right? Ha, ha, ha. And they're like, well, I don't know. There's a chance you guys could be separated because you have different visas. And we're like, okay, so um, May 15th? They're like, no, how about April 9th? I'm like, okay, May 1st. April 9th. Okay, how about April 30th? April 9th. I'm like, okay, there is no compromise here. <laughs> wow. And, and, and wouldn't you know it, like on April 9th, as we're, you know, with, which basically, by the way, that gave us nine days to pack up our apartment and get out of there, right? Jesus and Christ. And it, um, it was kind of crazy because um, what was happening at the time, there was this general distrust in Tokyo because the governor was like, oh, the Olympics are still going to happen. Don't you worry. And by yes. the way, you yep. know, everything's fine. We, you know, we're patting ourselves in the back because we took care of COVID-19. We're because, because Japan. <laughs> and um, <laughs> Jesus. all of a sudden, like on March 24th, they canceled the Olympics. And I think the crazy thing was I was watching it in Japan, watching her, her statement in Japanese and watching it in English. And in English, she was like, don't you worry. Together, we will fight this invisible demon. And then in Japanese, like it's a completely separate video with no English at all in the text in YouTube. It was all in Japanese. And she's like dire. She was like, we are going to die. Everybody put your masks on. And I was like, whoa, this is crazy. So on April 9th, IDEO had predicted it completely and like, like accurately. And on the cab ride to the airport, me and Mark got word. They declared the national lockdown on that day. And I was like, wow, you guys were like on the money. So we got out right on time, right on time. That is, that's a movie. Wow. It kind movie? of is, right? Like, but, then I, but, but then I thought about it. I was like, if I actually scripted it, it's actually only exciting to me. <laughs> but, but, it, but my adrenaline was pumping. And I was like, whoa, this is what, I mean, I think, how many times can we say what is going on like during this pandemic, right? But mm -hmm. in that moment, I was like, are you serious? San Francisco is really safer than Japan. Is that really possible? But like, as the days go, I'm tracking like the cases here in the Bay Area. Uh, specifically San Francisco, and then I look at Japan, I'm like, no, we we are better off here. It's crazy. Hmm. Yeah, I, that's that's where I'll give London Breed my my one good <laughs> tip. Thank yeah, you for I mean, closing early. Thank you. You did your job. Survivor instincts. <laughs> yeah. Right. Came, yeah. Came in for real. But um, so you were in Japan for a year, almost a year at this point? Almost. It would have been, it would have been a year um, on April 27th, but, uh, you know, just three weeks shy. And did you know anyone there prior or other than employees that, that uh, your husband had or anything like that? Did you know anyone there prior? Yeah, um, I did. And I didn't get to see any of them. That was an interesting thing because they'd moved to other parts of Japan. So I was still mm -hmm. just kind of chatting with them on Facebook. But we knew people because we'd visited there before. Um, we'd, visited, we'd visited Tokyo in 2009. Uh, Mark worked there for a long time in 2011. And I don't know if you guys know Taro Goto. He's uh, the old pro. Yeah, he was a programmer for Cam for Cam Fest, mm -hmm. um, and he was one of the producers of Fruit Fly, actually. Oh. And um, and he's out there working for Netflix. And uh, the the big joke was from everybody here in the states. It's like, oh, you're gonna go try and see Taro. Good luck. He's like become like a total like salary man. I'm like, that sounds really pejorative. Is that really possible? Right. Him like he's a super expressive American dude. And um, I emailed him. I'm like, hey, you know we're idea was across the street from you <laughs> we should like do lunch and he was so he was just so busy he was working on so many different, different he was working on the live action adaptation of one piece oh sorry yeah one piece uh, a bunch of just netflix extravaganzas and i just never got to see him wow well yeah. i yeah i'm just curious um because you're such a friendly outgoing guy i wanted to know how it was moving to japan and, and getting to know the locals because i i only spent three days in tokyo I fell in love with it, but it was funny because 
we had just come from India where everybody speaks English. So we're like, all right, we'll go to Tokyo for three days. It'll be easy. Nobody spoke English, at least not to us. And we're like, where are we? Can we help? You know, asking people for help and nobody would speak with us. And it wasn't until we went to the bar that night and we, we met some drunk Japanese people <laughs> and then they were speaking English to us. And they're like, oh no, we all know how to speak English. It's just that people are embarrassed because they don't want to oh. speak poorly, you know, so, so they just won't speak to you. But that is bars, so true. that's when we really got to connect with the people. And that is the Japanese experience. I mean, seriously, like, <laughs> okay. I, I, okay. I, I, yeah. I'd heard that for over a decade since I first went there. When I first went there, I was totally intimidated, but fell in love, just like you, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I was with Taro at the time. And I'll never forget something he said because he left me and Mark for our last two days. And I was like, oh, my God, we're not going to have anyone to walk us through Tokyo. And we're about to go through Shibuya, like a super dense area. And I was like, how are we going to communicate? And he's Japanese. And he says to me, he says, listen, um, when it comes down to it, and if worse comes to worse, uh, just say it in English with a stereotypical Japanese accent. And I was like, I don't know if I can, that's not so <laughs> damn racist. Yeah. I can't do that. Um, so he's like, trust me, you have to trust me. I'm like, okay. He goes, as long as you know what the Japanese accent actually is without sounding like a racist, then you can do it. I'm like, okay, that still sounds racist. So we were like, oh, we heard about the apple pies over at McDonald's. Let's go ahead and get one of the shaka shaka chickens, which is a huge chicken nugget, right? <laughs> and uh, Ooh. and, and it's, 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 it, you get one huge chicken nugget and you choose your flavor. And uh, Mark was like, uh, or, order, order one for me. I said, okay, well, practice your Japanese, go up there. So he orders, and but he says it in English. He's like, oh, I'll have a shaka shaka chicken. And he wanted black pepper. So he said, black pepper. And she was like, um, he's like, oh, <clears throat> black pepper and she's like mm. she's shaking her head like sorry and i'm like oh crap fine let me try this i walked up and i went <clears throat> buraku pepa and she's like ah buraku pepa ah. and she said she's like she's typing it in <laughs> and and i was like how is that possible and it was like over the years that i realized when i would talk to more of my japanese friends everybody learns everyone spends a couple years learning japanese there it's kind of just a thing but people are too ashamed they don't want to sound Ignorant learning ignorant. English. Yeah, yeah. Understand. So they yeah. do. They do understand. And they learn, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's also the perfectionist culture. I feel right. Like everything yeah. has to be very packaged. So mm -hmm. that's Including my thing. The language, like, right. like I mean, I mean, learning to speak was. Um, I had this thing where I'm like, well, the the vowel, it's pretty phonetic, right? The vowels are easy. It's like learning Filipino or Spanish, but I but. But no, there's like this, there's this perfection you have to uh, um, apply to certain things or you might mean the wrong thing. It's not even like certain vowel sounds. It's like intonation, you know? Mm -hmm. A lot of times, like they said, they're like, try to apply the California <coughs> lilt. And I'm like, I get that. I get that. Because <laughs> <laughs> like, if you don't apply the California lilt, you'll sound rude. I'm like, huh. Was that the okay. first time you lived outside of the States? Yeah. For that long? For that yeah. long. For that okay. long. You know, I... You know, I, uh, every time I've gone out of the country, um, no matter how long it is, even if it's like three or four months, I couldn't really call it living anywhere if I'm actually doing work, like if it's yeah. for work, you know, I'm not like those dudes who are like, oh, this reminds me of the time I lived in Kenya for a week. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> this is my first time actually living and like learning the culture and language and it was super cool and I didn't want to leave. Um, I, I mean, by the way, like, yeah, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm glad to be back in my apartment. I'm glad to be back in San Francisco. Um, but do you know what it feels like to be hanging out with your Japanese, your new Japanese friends and having them keep you up to speed on American politics? Mm. <laughs> you know? That's yeah. interesting. I mean, God, what a shit show. Yeah. 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 It's a, uh, yeah, it's a shit show. Um, <laughs> so how has your reentry been, been, been back though? Like, I know you're happy to be in your apartment, but it's such a weird time to come to, co to be forced to come back also. Yeah. Um, by the time we um, were told to leave, we had already been sheltering in place for about four, four and a half weeks. Oh. And the reason we were, Mark thinks it's five, actually, it might be five. The reason we were sheltering in place, it wasn't, you know, they never ordered it. Uh, not while we were there, because they were trying to keep, you know, keep everyone calm and, and don't forget the Olympics. But um, we were sheltering in place because uh, we got sick. And um, when I get sick, I get pretty sick. So it didn't really feel like anything new to me. 
Um, but we were staying, our apartment in Tokyo was like living inside of a transformer. It was crazy. It's 25 square meters. Um, it gets tiny and we loved it. It was like, well, squalor, what? Like whatever, this is great. <laughs> and, um, and, but of course we were going to get each other sick. And when I started getting better, Mark got sick and I'm like, okay, it's my turn to t- take care of you. And I have to say, I'd never seen him get sick in the 14 years we've been together. I have never seen him as sick as he was like, not with that harsh of a cough. I've never, he's, I've never heard him complain that he couldn't breathe. He mm. was shivering all the time. And I was like, okay, what is going on? Um, so at that point, when he was describing his symptoms to IDEO, they're like, stay home. <laughs> uh, we're not saying you have anything, but you have something. Um, so we were sheltering in place. So when we got back here, we were just forced to SIP again. Uh, I think at this point, it's week eight for us. Mm. Um, so nothing has really changed too much because we, you know, we've been working from home already, you know? Um, I, I, I think, I think that cam coming up is helping me with the reentry, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. uh, it's like this nice, nice little beacon to work toward, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, otherwise it, it's just, it's just been all a muddy mess, you know? Yeah. Um, God, so you guys were sick. Have you gotten the antibody test yet? No, we were talking about that. We 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 should probably take the antibody test now. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, uh, Jeff actually got really sick in March, I guess it was. Um, like the sickest I've ever seen him. Also, in the last the four years we've been together, and the sickest he said he's been probably in a really long time. Wow. And, um, it was really bad, and there was other stuff that happened <laughs> with his illness that I won't get into. Um, but he did the antibody test this, I think, earlier this week, and it came back negative. But he had, like, most of the symptoms. So it was re- it's weird. Yeah, I've been reading a lot about false negatives, too, you know? Right. Yeah. Um, like, I've just been kind of tracking people that I know who have been getting tested. Um, <laughs> and just, like, these really weird cases. There's, um, there's this filmmaker. Do you guys know Nicole Mashali? No. Um, mm-hmm. Filipino filmmaker. She um, lives in New York you know, lives kind of right. like in, in like the hotbed of it. Mm-hmm. And she got, uh, she got really sick and uh, her partner got really sick. And, um, and at the same time, and, you know, they, they live in a small space kind of breathing and coughing in each other's faces and they went and got the antibody test and only he came up positive. Mm-hmm. You know? mm-hmm. So, and, and I, and by the way, that's, those are all the details I really have, right. you know, um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's all that they really have. So, but it's just interesting, you know? For all we know, that's really the case. Maybe she had the flu and he had COVID. Who knows? Uh, yeah, I don't know. There is still too much that we don't know. I mean, we interviewed our friend that's a nurse, and she's like, even we know so little about this virus. Yeah. You know, we're all basically just learning as it comes. So who knows? Just happy to see that you're safe and you're back. And uh, I, I wanted to thank you for your uh, Mr. Blue Sky sing-along video. All oh. of those videos that you do are so, you're just like a comfort blanket. I don't know. Something, <laughs> about, something about the way that you approach art, even if it's, you know, Bitter Melon, which is a dark <laughs> tale, it's still like a comfort blanket in, in a way. I don't know what it is about your vision and the way that you create things, but thank you. It makes I just went through a rabbit hole of like your little videos and stuff, and it just made me feel better. It always does. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. You know, actually, I was I just finished talking to Pam Grady. Um, oh yeah, I love Pam because I just I she just she she comforts me. You know, like thank I, cause you. She, she's a neighbor. She's not far. Yeah. And the right. last last time we hung out, we were just complaining about how the neighborhood was changing, and it's like yeah. we get we I come back after a year, and I found out that all my neighbors have turned over four times. I've only been a year. year. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? shit. Yes. Um, But I'm also not surprised. Not yet, right? It's like because mission. But but, uh, Pam and I were talking about uh, Fruit Fly coming up, and she was saying, you know, she watched it again in preparation, and um, she was – she kind of mentioned something about uh, the comfort she felt, Um, and she asked me about uh, how I felt um, during the shoot when I first shot that. And – I, I'd never really thought about this. It was one of these moments that kind of was unearthed by a question that had never been asked of me. And I said, well, I don't think I was as scared as people thought I would be because I'd already done Colma. I just didn't direct it. Right. Um, And there I was with most of the people who worked on Colma. So it was pretty comforting, but also 
I kind of went out of my way um, to comfort every single person on set, you know, mm-hmm. to, and, and not just like, not just in that way, like a, like a flight attendant does like, Hey, yeah, I know we're crashing. <laughs> Keep calm. No, this, is, <laughs> this was more like getting them in on, in on the joke, so to speak, or kind of making them host as well. It's like, look, we're making a movie that's going to be, you know, this is, this is not a, a snide piece of art. This is not a piece. It's, it'll be clever, but it's not going to be sarcastic. It's not mean spirited. Um, we want people to walk away from this feeling pretty good about themselves and their city. And, um, and most of the people who were working on a cast and crew were from San Francisco and they all, they all agreed. And so I feel like, you know, and, and I was telling Pam, I'm like, yeah, I get, I, I wonder if a lot of that just kind of comes from like, from like this love of like hosting parties or just wanting harmony at all time. And when I say harmony, I mean like literal harmony. Like whenever I come up with a song, I'm like, ah, two people should be singing this, not, not just one. Um, <laughs> and, and, or I'll double track it myself. So there's this, there's this thing that I'm realizing now uh, when I look back at like my, my old work, I'm like, no, I think I, e- even when I would try to do like esoteric slash erudite stuff, I still wanted to like er- uh, entertain and like make you feel comfortable, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, um, uh, I don't know if you guys saw I Am a Ghost, but like a lot of people say, that's your Bergman film. That's such a European film. I'm like, yeah, but by the end, it's still a, it's still a roller coaster. I still want to take care of you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, having gone to your birthday party, you do take care of your people. Still one of, like, <laughs> one of the most memorable nights, I think, in my most recent uh, life. Seriously. And the Wait, food. and That yeah. was the last time, right? No, but that was before. Look guys that, that was, could have been 2018 no, as well who knows or maybe was it was 2019 like 2000. it might have been 2000 i don't know oh we went to that that one party at your house that was after the bitter melon premiere you two went you two went oh you didn't oh, go to that oh yeah one. you missed it <laughs> yeah, missed we were it. sending her pictures like sucker mm. <laughs> who asshole. says no who says no to an hp party just say it uh, i know i the mean old lady over here does yeah <laughs> No, but but I was thinking about how sad it would be. I mean, I was, I was like, Mark, when are we going to be able to host a party like that again? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? I was going to ask you, I have Mission Arcade on here at the question mark. Like, um, or is there a virtual I'm... idea? Or... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. uh, basically, um, with... You know, Masashi and I had been talking about Fruit Fly being a close, uh, not, not even closing that. I just said, hey, you know, the 10th anniversary is coming up. Um, and it was their idea to make it closing night, which I was super flattered by. But then all of a sudden the pandemic hit. And in my head, I was like, well, it doesn't matter for closing night anymore. That just means that's just a time slot, right? There mm. are no physical spaces. There is no like timed hier- hierarchy because really they're just like links to movies. Um, and that was just the way I felt because I was watching a bunch of online films uh, during the first part of the pandemic, like, you know, Universal Studios put their whole spate of Hollywood films available yeah. online on, on, or on iTunes, which was great because I got to watch Invisible Man, but then I, at the end of it, you're like, yeah, that was a lot of fun. I just paid $19 for a link, you know? Yeah. Like, I'm not, I, don't, I, don't get, I don't get the experience. It's, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's not a value add that I get to watch it at home. It's actually a diminished experience, and I'm paying right. more, mm-hmm. right? Right, mm-hmm. yeah. So I'm like, okay, I get it. They need to make their money, um, whatever. And as we all know, Trolls 2 made like a shit ton of money and yeah. they, that, that was a purely digital experience. Yeah. But I didn't see that, right? So like after that, I started seeing festivals doing online things. And for the most part, it just kind of felt, there, there was something that felt really just kind of like, hey, sorry, here's a Vimeo link. Right. And, mm-hmm. and that's fine. I get it, right? Like it's, you know, people don't, it's not magic. Like you have to hire developers to make it work. You have to make, you know, there, there's a lot of UX, a lot of experience that needs to, needs to be calibrated to make sure that you can handhold someone through the process. So a lot of people are like, you know, we don't have the time or the resources. Here's a Vimeo link, which is fine. But this was cam, you know, <laughs> I was like, yeah. can we talk about this? Like, is there something we can do? And Masashi was, he was so game. He was like, yeah, what, what can we do to keep the festival festive? Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, that's why I was like, we can, let's not cancel the sing-along idea. Let's keep it a sing-along, you know? <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and uh, so it's a sing-along. So like, it's, 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 it's sort of like fruit fly karaoke, but so I'm, there's like, <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of animated lyrics on screen, but there's going to be so a little bit of like, so a little bit of pop-up video, like some trivia that pops up. Oh, fun. Up. Okay. And, um, and the, there's going to be a Q&A with the cast and crew. But the thing I'm really proud of and I'm really happy about right now, and, and, uh, and I hope that you, I could indulge 
yeah. you, you'd indulge me. Um, there's a pre-show because I'm sorry, it's closing night. I, I, one of my favorite things about going to the closing night, night party at CAM is just seeing everybody and seeing everyone walk the red carpet and going into the Asian Art Museum or the Castro Theater, wherever, wherever it's happening. So um, before the movie starts, I'm hosting a red carpet. Oh, uh, oh cool. Nice. Are, are you wearing a tux? What's, <clears throat> what's the symbol? Um, <laughs> tux on top. I have uh, a pajama on. <laughs> I know, right? Um, I haven't decided what I'm going to wear, but basically I'm asking people to send me videos of what they're wearing. Oh. And I will play it as they send them to me, and I'll, I'll and um and I'll comment on it as if it's like as if it's the Golden Globes or, or like the Rose Parade. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll be a sort of like Ersatz Joan Rivers, you know. Awesome. Oh, so um, you're saying the drag might be a part of this? Oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh I, uh, hell yeah. I, I, I've actually I've actually hit up some people. I'm like, you know, mm -hmm. th this is this is not necessarily a fancy affair. Um, come however you want, you know? So, and, okay. if you and if you show up like in your PJs, I'll comment on that too, you know? <laughs> and, um, yeah. and so like, when, you know, I just kind of feel like you start off with this little show and you're reminding everyone who's tuning in that there are people behind this, you know? And there are other people who have been attending this festival that you might've missed. Um, and, and just reminding people to stick around uh, all the way through the film and reminding people to belt if they, if they can and to record themselves if they can. And so at the Q&A, if, if anyone sends us like videos of themselves singing, we'll play it back during the Q&A. Um, mm. But after that, I'm gonna invite people to an after party, which is Mission Arcade, basically. Ooh, okay. And, yes. uh, and then, there, and you know, it's because I always have an after party after my films, you yes. know, it's, especially yeah. if it's at the Roxy, you know? Right. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I just kind of feel like, you know, okay, I'm not gonna force Cam to like host a Zoom <laughs> for like four hours, you know. Right, right. right. Well, and um, no, no shade, but it wouldn't be as fun as if you hosted it. Yeah. Just saying. I know, but I'm still hosting. You know what I mean? Like it's. Uh, oh, you mean you mean oh, I see what you're saying. No, right. I mean if they were in charge of it, it would be fun, but it wouldn't have that HP quality fun. True. Although I I do want to give a shout out though, because I attended uh, the house party for opening night. Did you watch the opening night film? No, no oh, I, I didn't. Uh, and I wasn't will, it wasn't it was at Sundance, right? Uh, it was at South by. Oh, South by. Yeah, okay. mm -hmm. and it was really tragic because this is Lin Chen's first film. As, mm -hmm. I mean, it's her directorial debut, and mm -hmm. South by got canceled. So right. Um. So then she got cam, but like it's it's. I think everything is a diminished experience uh, uh, for a first time filmmaker. So it really sucks. So I just really it was really nice that Cam really did up the event. You know, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. had a great Q and A, gave her opening night. Um, and there was this house party, and I got I, I have to give a shout out to DJ Proof. Marky. Oh, Marky. Because, oh, yeah, nice. Yeah. Really, really, really kept the party going, you know, because it was, it was, um, it was, a, it was two sets of performances from the performers in the film. So you had Go Nakamura and uh, Ye Ming from uh, Dream Date. Mm. And both sets were great. They were just phenomenal. And, and you know what? There's something that really feels like a party about it when you just know you, even if it's a little, a little text box on the side of people kind of talking about the song. Commenting, the time, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it works, you know? Mm -hmm. And it, it, there was something really warm about walking in and all of a sudden you see like a bunch of HB, hey, HB. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, hey, this is amazing. I know all of these people. These are all of my friends. Mm -hmm. um, and in between, you know, there's always, you know, gaming had to break down her, her, her equipment and go, go went up. So there, there were these little pauses in between and, and Marky really kept it going. Okay. Yeah. So shout out to him. Cool. Uh, yeah. but, but, but my, my, mine will be uh, different in that mine's going to be a little dorkier and geekier. Kind of like, you know, you've been to my party. It'll be <laughs> the same thing, but online. But karaoke? Um, I'm hoping. For Somehow? That. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, are yeah. you going to ship everyone uh, Lich and Kuali <laughs> away while we're <laughs> virtual? Because that is just not the same. <laughs> I know. You know, so, um, you know, I, I, I'm looking into all these things for future events. Like, mm -hmm. uh, there are places you, you can actually ship cock, have bars ship mm -hmm. cocktails to people. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm cataloging all of this. Like, I, <laughs> there, there is a, a I don't doubt bar that. in your neighborhood called Casements. And we had one of the owners on our show before Shelter in Place. And she's been doing, um, I, so I've seen through Instagram, um, 
cocktail delivery. So just FYI, if there's someone local in your hood and she's awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She's amazing. So, yeah. Basements? Yeah. Casements, yeah. Casements, very like good the, to know. It's the only Irish bar in the Mission <laughs> that I'm aware. Well, not only the only mis- the only Irish bar in the Mission on Mission. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Because I was like, oh, there's Dover. No, but yeah, no, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, on Mission, yeah. Yeah, oh my God! Do you, well, actually, that's me right now. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> <I'm kind of laughs> <dumber>. um, <laughs> yeah, who's who's the nerd now? <laughs> no, that's great. That's really good to know. I just yeah. kind of feel like um, I need it. You know, the interesting thing is somebody was talking about how I was like the weirdest introvert they'd ever met. Um, <laughs> because I'm Nerd. like constantly throwing these parties, and I just love talking to huge groups of people. Um, <laughs> but I stand by, I am a textbook introvert. I really am. Like, I love curling up with a book, but like, I also love throwing these parties. And I realized, I'm like, we need to do something. There has to be, like, like e- even if it's virtual, you know? Um, mm-hmm. It started with the Mr. Blue Sky thing. You know, like when I did the Mr. Blue Sky video, I didn't really need to have a birthday video. But the truth is, a lot of my friends are performers who got laid off. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I was like, let's just perform something. Let's do something, you know? Uh. Um, so sweet. Mm-hmm. And you see, do you see the people? Like, I, I, I didn't know half of those people. Like there were just a bunch of new people that popped up out of nowhere. The little girl, the little <laughs> oh, girl, that's so singing, adorable, like, preteen or whatever she is. Yeah, amazing. With, a, with like a super like modern voice. Did you hear that? Yeah, and she's very serious. She's yeah. not messing around. Yeah, she's just like got the pose. And, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. So yeah. I just kind of feel like I, I need to. Um, not just not stopping with cam right like maybe after that we have the after party but then after that maybe just ha- host some other things now i will say i think i have to space them out because when i did get yeah. back i think there have been a lot of people who are like we need to make sure that we keep in contact what are you doing tomorrow night <laughs> no, 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 no. and like i can't i can't do is zo- i can't zoom every night also by the way <laughs> by the way tip from an introvert to like the extroverts out there don't don't um don't lead with what are you doing tomorrow night you know because <laughs> what i really want to respond with is depends on what your next question is right. then maybe i'm an introvert that's not just for introverts that's yeah. for everyone and we've actually said this on bitch talk like yeah. now that everybody knows that everyone's home they just think that you're free to you know it doesn't mean i love you any less but i'm not just free to talk every night on zoom you know it's just I know. It's harder to say no now because everyone knows you're home. Yeah. yeah. No, no, not it. And we're not that available. <laughs> um, the last thing I wanted to end with uh, to, to wrap up here is um, congratulations on winning the internet early during the pandemic with your fucking Zoom, hilarious Zoom oh, God. Uh, conference whatever. call. Yes. I was like, you say that, and I'm staring at a grid of four I know. right now. <laughs> I, know. <laughs> I know. It's very meta, but I mean, as soon as you put that out, I sent it to everyone at my work because I was like, this is us right now. This is us. <laughs> this is us. And you did it before anyone else. So congratulations. Mm-hmm. No, thank you. You know what's crazy about, about that is I actually, um, I did that months before. In Tokyo, right. In Tokyo, yeah. Yes. Because I, I was... Um, I've been working a lot on these four projects uh, that are all U.S. based. And the great thing about working uh, for U.S. clients while, they're, while you're in Tokyo is they respect your time. Like they won't ever text you. They'll be like, ooh, is he awake? Oh. Let's make sure we schedule a call. Oh. Um, but, that <laughs> also means, but that also means that you're constantly on Zoom calls, right? Yes. Mm. And <laughs> not everyone knows how to work a microphone. Not everyone knows how to unmute, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. And I just had it in my head. I was like, well, surely other writers must be going through this or other people who work remotely. So I made that thinking, I'm going to tweet this and um, I'm going to get like 20 likes. And, uh, and I tweeted it and it got three. And I was like, eh, okay, not bad. Um, <laughs> right. and, 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 and I am one of those people. Yeah, three yeah, people. And, I, and, 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 I, and, you know, one of them was my brother. Um, <laughs> and, like, thanks for the heart, Joe. Yeah. But um, <laughs> I am one of those uh, 
people on Twitter who, if I have like a low number, a lower number than I expected, I just delete that shit. I'm like, okay, whatever. <gasps> Do you, know? you really? Oh yeah, that That's... way your, your feed oh. looks amazing. Like everything has a bunch of likes on it, you know? Oh, you're Pro one tip. of those. Okay, well maybe now I'm gonna have to go back through Bitch Talk. <laughs> okay, go ahead. You keep going here. Okay. Are you kidding? Like like half of my tweets bomb, you know? And I'm like, oh, that got no attention in an hour. I'm gonna delete that. Okay. Um, but. Uh, what happened was when we were sheltering in place, I, I started noticing more people were talking about exactly what I was talking about. And I was like, I'm just going to tweet that again. And I went to sleep and I was like, well, last time I had three, this time I'll get 20 for sure. And I know exactly which 20 are going to like it. These are all people who I know are working remotely and woke up the next morning and like, I'd never had that many eyes on anything I'd ever created before. Mm. <laughs> like the view count was like, I think like 300,000 or something like that. Wow. <laughs> at, at I mean, it's, it's higher now, but like at that right. point, I was like, well, I, I'm pretty sure the 20 I expected are in there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. You're yeah. basically like the uh, D nice of Zoom calls. DJ D. Uh, quarantine. See, there you go. Uh, it is true because that quarantine video, it is like a song because you have a certain cadence to it. And it's because you're, of your musical inclination or, or right. whatever. There is a cadence to it. It's really, it's really, yeah. It's well, really so you picked up on that. So funny that you picked up on that because there is a cadence because that's the only way I can do a split screen with myself. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. so so I did, follow I, the beats. Exactly. Of, I was, yeah. I was following beats that only I could detect. You know. Yeah. Um, and it was really crazy to just see like people like tweeting that. And what's interesting is because of that, a bunch of, because of that and Mr. Blue Sky, a bunch of people, wait, no, because of that and Mr. Blue Sky and because Good Morning America took it, um, that's when people started asking if I could help them with their split screen videos. Mm. And none of them came to fruition because a lot of them just assumed it's some app that you just do it with. And it's easy. Mm. Yeah. You know, I'm like, I mean, no offense to some of them, like a lot of them are like, oh, we're going to get a bunch of our friends so that, to, to, to sing um, I Have Nothing by Whitney Houston. Cool. Um, <laughs> none of y'all can sing. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it was like? Do you remember when Gal Gadot did her like pandemic oh, video? We do. Oh, I've talked about it many a time. Yeah, we had on W. Kamau Bell that week. Mm -hmm. And we were like, aren't you happy you didn't get the call to try and be a part of that? <laughs> he was like, well. But he was very honest about it. Yeah, he was yeah. like, listen, if, in hindsight, of course, I'm happy I'm not in it. But if Gal Gadot reached out to me and was like, hey, said, no. will you sing a line? He's like, you'd, he was like, you'd see my dumb face in that video, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, like, yeah. in hindsight, of course, it's easy to say, like, oh, I, but it just is bad. Anyway, go on. Yeah, it didn't land well. It didn't land well. It was bad. To, it happened around, like around the same week as like Madonna's COVID video, two COVID videos. Which videos. I didn't even see. I didn't even know that she had one. Oh, she, uh, she redid Vogue. Was it not Vogue. good? She redid uh -huh. Vogue in her bathroom. She was talking about her COVID woes, what the pandemic is doing it to her, and how <laughs> she, she had, the, rose, had, the rose petal tub. That's the second one. Oh, that was the so first cool. one is her singing Vogue. Come on, girl, let's eat some fried fish. And... Um, <laughs> And it just felt really tone deaf and like people, people blasted her on social media. And so her response to Ugh. that was to not address the video, but to just put out just another video. something else. Yeah. In the same bathroom where she's like <laughs> naked in an American beauty bathtub. Um, rose petals. Rose petals everywhere. <laughs> and she's like, we're all in this together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's not how my wow. quarantine looks. For never, sake. I never even heard of it, so and I feel like I'm on social media a lot, so that didn't land for me. Apparently, we're all in this. You don't need to. You, I mean, you, you don't need to see it. It's pretty. Um, I'm it's like the most tone deaf thing I've ever you seen. You get it. That's what it is. Are you? We're all in this together. Yeah. No, she called it. The, she said it's the great equalizer. This virus, this horrible, mm. horrible virus, doesn't care about your gender or your creed or whether you're a great storyteller or a wonderful performer. I'm like, are you talking about yourself still? Like, I feel like uh, this is still about you, isn't it? Yes, it's always been about her. Oh, boy. Okay. Oh, God. Well, I'll make a note here uh, not to watch that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just carry on about your business. HP, Don't worry about that. HP, this has been too short, so maybe we can do something while we're still sheltering in place in the next eight months or whatever. Sure. Like, so. I know, right? Yeah, let's do something before 2022. Cool. <laughs> yeah, right? And, and, but, yeah. Your go parties. Ahead. No. Yeah. We got to know about your parties. I'll go. We'll go to all of them. Okay. <laughs> well, you can start with the one on May 22nd. 
Cool. Okay. May twenty second. Yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, yeah, just you know, you just get just it's it's all there on camfest.com. Like you, you click on that link, and everything's a chain reaction. You go to that, you get to the free show, which goes to the movie, which then goes to the Q and A, which then will go to the party. Mm-hmm. And but where can people find you as well? Uh, HPMendoza.com. And if you want to find me online, my handle is at HPMendoza. Awesome. I just want to thank HP Mendoza for being our rock, our sanity, <laughs> pre-quarantine, and especially now. Um, everything that he puts out is 100% heart. <laughs> and uh, I um, I, it's weird we haven't really had a, a bitch talk with HP in a couple a couple of years, I think. Yeah, 2018 or 2017. Well, that is more than, uh, yeah, since 2017, but we've been connected since he came on the show. Um, I will give a shout out to uh, my partner, Jeff, at Story San Francisco for putting us in touch with HP and being like, you should have him on the show. And we're like, oh yeah, we should. Um, but he's just been, a, um, I don't know, just kind of like a, one of our guests that are like in solidarity in a weird way. A comfort <laughs> blanket. <laughs> <laughs> right the comfort blanket of bitch talk so thank you hp um that was a great conversation yeah, well i I'm, I'm sure you guys were too it's like he was i was like looking forward to friday because you knew it was going to be fun and you knew it was going to be easy like i was like oh friday with hp oh that's you know like we knew that it could possibly be two hours and um, <laughs> It was not 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 all on the record, but uh, it was a two-hour conversation that we just had. So, yeah. um, I literally texted Aaron, and I was like, "I'm really looking forward to HP." Yeah, she did because we we're kind of going back and forth. Yeah, we really whatever it takes to get us through these times, like that little shining light. HP was that for this yeah. week. Yeah, yeah. So thank you, HP. Um, I think there's more to come there with him. So that's all I'll say on that. So um, you can find us at bitchtalkpodcast.com. Please sign up for our monthly e-newsletters. You can also find us on YouTube with little behind the scenes footage. Please check it out and subscribe. It's brand spanking new. You can also find us every Monday morning from 6 to 6.30 at bff.fm. We are powered by GoTo Productions. Bitch, please.